Hey everyone, this is Ms. Moffat from Across the Litterverse, and welcome to Friday Reads. So I have a cold for the 50 millionth time this year, and I thought I would celebrate by planning out how best to spend this weekend in bed. Actually, now that I think about it, I should stop by the library and pick up some book on, like, viruses and how to, like, cure them, or at least, like, deal with them. That might be a good idea. First step is Timeless by Gail Carriger, which is the fifth and final book in the Parasol Protectorate series. I bought the series box set as a birthday gift to myself many years ago, and now that I think of it, I think I might have actually hauled this at one point. <laughs> I feel a proper booktuber would brag about hauling an entire box set. I will find it. Oh yes, I will find it, and I will leave a link somewhere here in this video clip in case you were curious to see how far my production values have come since I started this channel. I probably bought the Parasol Protectorate series about three or four years ago, and out of principle I am gonna see this series through to the end. The Parasol Protectorate series follows the misadventures of Alexia Terabati, a woman without a soul and an overabundance of sassiness and intrigue. She's what's known as a pre natural, or a person who can cancel out the abilities and immortality of vampires, werewolves, and other supernatural beings. Over the course of the series, Alexia shocks London's high society as she moves from being the outspoken, independent spinster of her family to becoming the outspoken, independent wife of Lord Connell Mackin, the alpha werewolf of the Wolsey Pack. Without giving too much away, Timeless whisks Alexia and her crew to Egypt to solve the final mystery of an immortality-canceling phenomenon called the Godbreaker Plague. I'll be honest, I'm a little torn when it comes to this series. I do love that it's a sexy, supernatural romp, and I always seem to walk away craving tea and very elaborate desserts, but I often get so frustrated because it takes so long for events to happen. Like, there's a prominent murder mystery floating in the background of this book, and it tends to get buried under descriptions of dresses and crevasse and all kinds of crazy hats. So as much as I love the flightiness sometimes, I do wish there was just more plot, but this one's been a comforting one to read while I've been sick, so I can't get too down on it. And yeah, I mean, I'm at the end of a series here too, which feels a little surreal as well. Next I have Made Sama, Volume 7 by Hiro Fujiwara, or rather this two-in-one contains volumes 13 and 14 of the original series. Misaki Ayazawa is the student council president at a rough, predominantly male high school, and she's got a rule with an iron fist to keep the gents on track. However, she has one little secret. To help out with her family's finances, is she's taken on a part-time job at a maid cafe where she has to be all sunshine and bubbles for the largely male clientele. When her school's troublesome heartthrob Takumi Usui finds out, how will she keep her strong, overachieving persona intact? Manga is my brain candy of choice, and Made Someone in particular just makes me feel so much better when I'm not feeling well. There was a great deal to squeal about in this collection, let me tell you. I don't want to give anything away here, but take one super romantic Christmas date, add a Ferris wheel, surprise me with a hand-knit scarf, and you've got one very happy Moffat. I'm sure this will soothe me when my Tylenol and Advil fails. And last, I've got The Fires of Autumn by Irene Nemrovsky, or rather, I will once I go to the library. I'll be discussing I'm this book with my book club on March 22nd, except I kind of realized that I'm going to be working a comic book convention like all next weekend, which means I only have this weekend to read it, so I'm just going to have to pull my failing health together and triumph my way through reading this book. On one hand, this book looks shorter than our usual fare, but I'm sure that this book will emotionally gut me in the best way possible. It looks like the story takes place after the First World War and follows a gent named Bernard who falls in with a couple whose life of delinquency is supported by suspect financial financial dealings and loose morals, egads. I'm guessing this book will feature beautifully developed characters and rich writing, so I'm sure I'm in for a treat. So how about you? What books are you going to check out this weekend? Are you going to finish them? Are you maybe starting some new ones? Feel free to leave a comment below. And on that note, signing off.